If you want to hook up and use one of these, on Logic Pro running on one of these, in this video I'll show you how. For the purposes of this video, I'll show you how to connect an audio interface to Logic Pro for iPad using this Arturia Mini Fuse 2 and this Focusrite Scarlett Solo. But you can follow along with any USB class compliant audio interface. Note that Firewire audio interfaces just don't work with iPads with or without an adapter. If you have an 8th or 9th gen iPad or 5th gen iPad mini with a lightning port, you'll need one of these. This is the official Apple lightning to USB adapter or camera connection kit as it's also confusingly known. It has a lightning plug at the end of a short cable and a USB-A and lightning port at the other end. Yes, you can grab much cheaper third-party clones of this wee gadget from eBay, Amazon and even Wish, but I would definitely recommend against it. Apple are notorious for pushing out regular updates that can make unofficial lightning-based peripherals and cables obsolete, if they work at all. So my advice regarding these adapters is to pay a bit more and get the real deal from Apple. You will save yourself some headaches further down the line, trust me. First step is to plug the adapter's lightning connection into the lightning port of your iPad. Next, connect your audio interface's USB plug to the adapter's USB port. Here's where you'll likely hit a bit of trouble. Lightning-based iPads don't generate enough power on their own to power an audio interface, so you'll get this message when you plug it in. This is where the lightning port on the adapter comes in. By attaching a lightning cable attached to your device's plugged-in charger, you'll be providing enough power for the audio interface to work and record your audio into Logic Pro, even using 48 volt phantom power. You can confirm that Logic sees your attached audio interface by tapping on the three dots in the top right of Logic's screen, then selecting Settings, and then tapping on the Audio tab. Here you should see the name of your attached audio interface, in this case the Scarlett Solo, displayed as the input and or output. We'll come back to this screen and have a fiddle with some settings a wee bit later on. Every other supported iPad model has a USB-C port and getting set up is a much more straightforward process. In fact, if you have an audio interface with a USB-C power output like this one, this one, or this one, you can grab a USB-C to USB-C cable, plug it directly into your iPads, and you'll be off to the races. If you'd rather use the standalone USB-C to USB cable that manufacturers still insist on bundling with most audio interfaces nowadays, you'll need an adapter of some kind. Unlike with Lightning, you have far more choice when it comes to USB-C adapters, and there's no need to stick to Apple's official gadget. If you want to splash out on your setup, something like this QuizLab magnetic stand and hub offers multiple USB inputs and pass-through charging to keep your iPad's battery topped up while in use. If you'd rather something a little more discreet and wallet-friendly, this Anchor Hub attaches to the side of your iPad and gives you the connectivity you need, as well as a built-in headphone jack. However you get your audio interface connected, USB-C port-equipped iPads output enough power from that port to run it without any extra juice. You've attached your audio interface, so what now? Well, if I start here and select to open a fresh project, I can tap on Audio to open a new audio track, or I can tap on the three dots here to drill down into some more settings. Now, I won't change inputs and stuff here, as the settings menu you can access when you're in your Logic project proper actually gives you much more options. So I'll tap Audio and create a new audio track. I'll close the browser as I don't really need that just now. 
and then tap on the three dots at the top right of the screen and select Settings. In the Audio tab, the Auto Select Audio Devices option will probably be toggled on by default. Now, this will automatically select an audio device, like an audio interface, and assign it as both the input and output when it's connected. That means that any audio you record will have to go in through the audio interface and whatever you've attached to it, like a microphone or a guitar, for example. It also means that any outgoing sound from Logic Pro will go through your audio interface too. So if you attach headphones to your dongle, for example, you wouldn't hear the audio from Logic Pro when you play back your project or your recordings, etc. You need to attach headphones to your audio interface's headphone output or attach monitor speakers to its speaker outputs. If you toggle auto select audio devices off, you can manually select from any available inputs. So you could listen through headphones attached to your audio interface, but record audio through your iPad's built in microphones. Or you could record audio using your audio interface, but listen back to your recordings and your project as a whole through your iPad's speakers. Personally, I prefer to have the input and output set to the audio interface, but you do you. Once you're ready to record, make sure you arm the track by tapping the R button in your audio track's playhead, and then just hit the record button and start singing, playing, or as I'm doing here, talking a load of old bollocks. Right, that's how to get up and running with an audio interface in Logic Pro for iPad. Let me know which audio interface you prefer down in the comments, and if you could give that like button one of your special cuddles on the way past, I'd really appreciate it. And if you're still getting to grips with Logic Pro for iPad and want a few pointers on where's best to start, watch this next.